Frank. Wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Same to you, Frank. Yeah, yeah. appreciate it, man. Frank, when we were talking to Keaton, and, uh, and Pat also talked about a little bit this too, he talked about how not everything is always on the quarterback. Sometimes guys run through us. And there was one third down you guys had where Bub Means looked like he was running the clear out and just <laughs> forgot to kind of look back for yeah. the ball. How do you work on timing things like that to, you know, kind of have ways where, like, yeah, you understand that you are the clear out guy, but if they leave you open, you got to look back? Well, you know what? Football is the ultimate team game, right? We've talked about it before. Um, when there's a lack of execution, there's a lot of different reasons why. Mm -hmm. You try to get 11 guys playing as one. Sometimes it looks like the quarterback, mm -hmm. when in reality, when you come in here, it might be the wide receiver, mm -hmm. it might be the protection. You know, there's other reasons. Now, to answer your question, how do you try to get the timing and rhythm and everyone on the same page is through practice. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at a daily schedule, we come in here, we meet, we install the passes, and then we go to the indoor, we actually walk through the passes, and then we practice them. And uh, you know, what happens sometimes is the human element, which we all go through, you know, the human element of a guy's running a route, and, and maybe he's a step off, or maybe his eyes are just a little late sometimes. And you, and you try to really, what you try to do is minimize the margin of error. All right, to that, to that point, why hasn't the pass game clicked as well as the run game this year? Well, you know, I do believe we're getting better. I think we're making progress. And not to be repetitive, but when we come in here on Sunday and we watch the tape, it's, it's a multi, you know, it's different reasons. Sometimes there's beautiful execution. You know, like, like the deep end that we threw, I mean, it was just beautiful. It couldn't be any better. Then there's plays you leave on the field. You know, for instance, like the second play of the game, you know, Keaton just underthrows the ball. Then there's another play, like maybe the one you referred to, Chris, where the wide receiver doesn't look at the appropriate time. Then there might be another play where you're saying, wow, you know, uh, we got a big play opportunity, but maybe the protection breaks down. And when you talk about the protection, it's not always the offensive line. It could be the backs in protection. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, for different reasons. And, uh, you know, we talk about, we know it's difficult. What we try to do, what the players try to do, it's not easy. But when we leave, let's use the number 10. Let's say we leave 10 good pass opportunities on the field. We got to cut that at least in half or to two and three, you know. And uh, you keep working on it. Uh, you keep coaching, you know. We've used this for years as coaches. You know, our responsibility is to teach this great game and then correct it, and players prepare to perform. And you hope to close the gap on that. How is, uh, how is Keaton a uh, different slash better quarterback than the day you first met him? Wow, I tell you what, man, I see it on the tape and even today's practice. Let's just take, you know, a few route concepts. You know, these might not mean anything to you guys, but like Dagger and, yeah. and uh, you know, Potter and just how you can see that he knows what it looks like now. He understands the timing and the rhythm of his eyes and his feet and the ball location and, and the type of balls based on zone coverage and man coverage. The only way you get better is to play the game. And the more you play, the better you should get. And uh, with that, you hope the results get better. You know, what we have seen, and we talked about to the offense, that when November started, we had four opportunities left. And the one thing we always talked about in pro football was they remember what you do in November because that's when teams separate themselves. You know, the contenders from the pretenders. Teams either get better or they don't. And I think what you've seen with us as a team, we're 3-0 and in November. Our goal is to make it four. And as an offense, we do see progress. Uh, we strive for balance in the run game and the passing game. And there's things in the run game that, that could be better. It's just... You know, to, to, the, to the human eye, the run game isn't as exposed as the passing game. Because believe me, there's some combinations on the front side and the back side. If we're, we do a, th a few things a little better, we got some runs popping out too. So, you know, it's the ultimate team game. It starts with myself. It starts with the coaches. And then, uh, you know, just getting that execution better on game day. What about my Go ahead, Mark. You had an offensive line that went through a lot this year with injuries and, Certainly. and reshuffling and whatnot. Now you have Owen back. Um, 
where have you noticed that group taking strides at, especially given all of that turnover and all of that just reconfiguring that you've had to do? And how much does it mean to have Owen back as well? Well, first off, Owen's a great player, a great kid. He does a great job with his IDs. He brings experience. Um, he gets everyone on the same page. But, you know, you brought up a good point because we've had a lot of different rotations in there. But it shows you what a great job the coach Narduzzi and Coach Borbley and AO have done recruiting linemen and training linemen. Because as the offensive coordinator and play caller, I haven't had to blink worrying about who's playing left tackle, who's playing right tackle, who's at center. Um, we've been very fortunate with the depth that we have up front. What, do you, what does Miami do well on defense that you guys have to pl game plan to counter on Saturday night? Well, I think when you put the tape on, you just see a front four that's athletic. Mm -hmm. Then you look at the linebackers, and they can run. And same with the back end, they're athletic. For instance, when you just take a look at when teams might run boots or keepers, whatever you want to call on them, they run, man. You know, when you see their guys having to pursue to the football, you see guys that can run to the ball. The process of play calling it kind of intrigues me. How, yeah. how many, how many uh, plays ahead are you thinking? <laughs> and, and how quickly do you have to change? Let's say there's a sack. Okay, yeah. and you got to change. Well, it's now second and 19 instead of first and 10. You know what? That is a great question. I mean that. And we could talk all day or week on it. And I'd love to sometime because, you know, I was brought up around my father, Mike McCarthy, being, uh, you know, the tree of Bill Walsh where you have the scripted openers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a road map. You know, you just don't go down them, but it's a road map for normal down and distance. And then you... You know, you have your situational calls, you know, whether it's third down and then different third downs. Is it short yardage? Is it third and short, medium or long? And then once you get into the fringe, high red, low red, I mean, it's, you know, it's a chess match. That's, that's as coaches, we love game planning. You know, the X's and O's of the game, because you really try to put your players in a position to be successful. And who are you playing and how can you attack the front and the back end? Calling the play, you got to be thinking ahead and you got to think fast because things do happen fast. Mm -hmm. So somewhere, let's just say you call that first play on first and 10. You know, somewhere during that play, you're processing a few different things in your mind because am I going to be second and short? Am I going to be second and medium? Are we going to have a first down? What hash are we going to be on? And what did we just see on that last, last down that maybe we can take advantage of? Um, experience helps. Being around great coaches and coordinators, which I think I've been around great ones, helps. Who's the best play caller you've ever been around? Oh, Mike McCarthy. Oh, yeah? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah? The guy sees the game. The guy understands the game. He understands how defensive fit gaps, how they react, and then how you have to go expose them, whether it's on the front end or the back end. And, right. he, and, and he would see it so well. Help, help me out with this then. So one, one specific situation. The touchdown pass that you guys threw at the end of the first half. Yes. Uh, Duke shows single high safety. You guys have Jared running up the seam down the middle, yeah. but they ended up being in cover two. Was that something that you guys anticipated that, hey, Chris, they're going to go too high here? Chris, you know what we had? We had, we had a call on that literally would call it a PSL, okay. you know, uh, combination. We had a one high beater on one side. We had a two high beater on the other side. Okay. And... When it went to too high, Jared and Keaton were on the same page. I saw. And Jared adjusted his route to take the open space. Mm. And it, it's, you know, there's things that happen on the field beyond coaching. And that was beyond coaching. Jared and Keaton did an unbelievable job taking what the defense gave them and bringing up the kicker for an extra point, man. I mean, that was awesome to see.